Irv, Irv will be about 15 minutes late, as will Alexis, and we expect Ms. Bridges um, to be back soon. She had some technical issues, but I will go ahead. Thank you for um, recording the meeting. Jennifer, I'm going to call to order the March 20th meeting of the African Heritage Reparation Assembly at 2.04 p.m. This meeting is being recorded pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021. This meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. I'm going to do a sound check, make sure everybody can hear and be heard, and I will start with you, Paula. I can hear. Can you hear me? Yes, very good. Uh, Yvonne. Yes, I can hear you, um, and I hope you can hear me. Yes, very clear. Dr. Shabazz? Yes, I'm good. Thank you. Okay, just to let you know if you can hear me, Dr. Shabazz, you came in just now pretty choppy. Um, it, and I understand maybe you're not in a in a that that might be better for when you speak. That that's great. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. Uh -huh. Okay, great. And Jennifer, you can hear us and we can hear you. I can hear you. Thank you. Great. Okay, so as I was saying before, we're going to have a relatively short meeting. We'll be finishing by three o'clock. Um, there just are timing constraints that folks have today. Um, but we will want next Monday to be a bit of a longer meeting. And I'll explain that. Uh, I'll explain that in just a second after we have a chance to welcome Ms. Bridges. Hi, Ms. Bridges. <laughs> Can hi. You, hi. <laughs> How are you? Good. How are you doing? <laughs> Hanging in there. Had a problem with my eyes, so I might have to get off between three and three thirty. Um, I had a problem with my eye. I had to go back to the eye doctor. Oh goodness. Okay. I so, hope it's healing up. We're gonna finish um at three o'clock sharp today. So that oh, way that's good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm seeing as best I can. If you see me close one eye, don't worry about it. Okay. All right. <laughs> we can hear you well, so that's good. Okay. All right. So, yeah, we're going to finish up by 3 o'clock today. Um, next week, though, will be good for us to... Oh, <laughs> this is going to be one of those meetings. Uh, and now we're going to just pause for a moment to make sure that we can uh, welcome Dr. Rhodes. Welcome, Dr. Rhodes. Can you hear us? I can hear you. All right, excellent. So today's meeting is going to end at three o'clock, Dr. Rhodes, um, th that we will hope to have everything wrapped up. Um, some folks have timing restraints. Um, if we can for our next meeting, which is Monday, um, and I'll just pull up my calendar here, the 27th, we'll want to plan to meet for at least an hour and a half. Um, reason being is we'll be right up against our uh, town hall that's happening on Thursday, the 30th. And Irv and I will also have met with the Dunahue Institute. We're meeting with the Dunahue Institute on Wednesday. Uh, they've taken our feedback from the retreat and the meetings that we've had, and they are in the process of developing the first draft of our survey in Qualtrics. Um, so just a quick review today, we're going to uh, have some updates on the survey and we do need to make um, a, de a decision on something there. Um, we also have some updates on the big payback screening and then uh, whatever, and, and, and then we have two other items. We have the Darity Mullen League of Women Voters Racial Justice Committee collaboration and uh, the Amherst College listening session that has been requested um, if we we may or may not get to those items, depending on our timing and what we have happening in public comment today, we will still have two periods of public comment as usual. I'm going to open us up actually with public comment today um, and ask that anybody who's in attendance right now who would like to make public comment, um, please go ahead and raise your hand. 
<clears throat> and uh, we will be listening very carefully to all public comments, generally not responding. And um, I do not see any hands raised for this period of public comment. However, we'll have a second period of public comment before we adjourn. So in terms of the survey, any questions, by the way, I'm just kind of moving fast so we can meet our timeline of three o'clock. <laughs> All right. So in terms of the survey, Dr. Rhodes and I um, prepared some feedback that went to the Donahue Institute based on the couple of meetings that we've had, including the retreat, and they're in the process of developing the survey um, one outstanding decision that needs to be made by the committee, um, and if we could make it or at least think about it, have a brainstorm about it, is we need to identify one, if not two, people who can test the survey before it is made publicly available. And so I wanted to put that out to the committee here to see if there were any suggestions about um, you know, maybe not an individual person, but how we want to think about that, who should be uh, the, you know, who should we be thinking about in terms of who might test the survey. So that's open, the floor is open for discussion on that. I'm promoting Pamela to uh, panelists. Oh, great. Okay. And I'll make sure that Pamela can be heard. Welcome, Pamela. Can you hear us? Yes, I'm just turning my camera on. No worries. Nice <laughs> to see you. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the floor is open. If there are any suggestions about who we might identify and invite to test the survey when it's complete. Any thoughts on that? I was thinking. Dr. Rhodes? Of, yeah. yeah. I was thinking of uh, someone from the council, like Alicia. All right. How many people do you need? Um, the Dunahue has asked us to identify at least one, um, and they will need to meet with that person. So whoever it is that we identify and invite will need to have some time available to meet with the Dunahue and sort of, it won't just be quickly taking the survey kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. So we might want to think about a few people mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. depending on, you know, who might be available to do that. And Irv, I love that suggestion. I am wondering, I don't think there would be any reason for that to be a conflict. Nothing's coming to my mind immediately. Jennifer, Pamela, anything come to your mind on that? No, okay. Yvonne, yes. Um, how about, I don't know, um, I know that she's very involved with the Black Caucus, but Kathleen Anderson? Mm. might be a good suggestion yeah great i agree should be excellent and if you want to um offer a suggestion just you can send me and jennifer and pamela an email um and just let us know if you think of someone or you just would you know if it, it's not coming to you right now um, are there any particular criteria that we would want to have in mind for having this person, um, anything specifically that we would want? It would be great to have a young person. Okay. So if there's any, you know, like youth, teenagers in the high school or whatever, one or two of those folks would be great, I think. And do we want, I can identify. I'm sorry, Dr. Shabazz, yes, please. I can certainly uh, survey uh, college students or student um, are available to me to, uh, to ask uh, at, at UMass or, or even on 
Hampshire College uh, or, or, or otherwise. So if they would like some college students, I can certainly help identify some to uh, take the survey. Excellent. Okay, I see Pamela's hand is raised and then we'll go to Hala. Pamela? So I was just gonna ask um, if they would take more than one tester and if the survey is um, divided. So I think at one time you, the survey was going to have a portion of questions that would be um, could be answered by um, by white folks, but would not. So I think that is all that would also be important to do. So so if there are the vast majority of the questions are directed at folks who are of you know African um, heritage. And then for those questions that are directed at uh, towards people who identify as white, I think that would also be someone to test those questions would be helpful. Absolutely. I think that's a great suggestion. Um, and if anybody has anybody in mind for that, uh, yes, Hala. Um, when Kathleen Anderson's name was brought up, I was like, amazing, because she's so well-versed, not well-versed, but she knows, lives, and breathes reparations. And then I realized it might also benefit us to have someone who has like no idea about what, because that might be our largest sample in town, people who haven't really heard a lot about reparations except for 40 acres and a mule. So if we could do a few, that might be helpful to see what we're, we aren't clear about, what we might need to you know, clarify. Yeah, I think that's a really, really good point. <clears throat> and I can talk to uh, when Irv, when Irv and I meet with them on Wednesday, we can speak with them about like all of these different criteria that we've just discussed today and see what they think. Okay. Um, any other comments or questions about that right now? Um, and so yep. I'm thinking that perhaps it's not, but I just with Alicia wanted to ask if we thought it was a conflict of interest, but there's no real decision making, but you know, everything that the counselors do, they're voting on it. So I don't know if that seems like a conflict or not. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I would want to get more clarification on that one. <clears throat> Definitely. Uh, one, one more is, uh, you know, both, I think, uh, Michelle, you and I are familiar with this person because she has been involved with her own surveys that she's done other things with. That's uh, Jess, Jesse Payne, mm. uh, you know, Dr. Jesse Payne. Um, she would have a particular view in terms of the questions themselves. So yeah. it might be good to get her feedback. Yeah, I agree. Okay, yeah. And, and Jesse, we'll, we'll have a chance later to talk. We, we even haven't had a chance, um, Irv, to talk um, about the expertise that she might be able to provide to the assembly at some point. All right. Um, so, all right. Any other questions on the survey or comments at this time? Um, I think I'm hoping that we'll be able to do some of the work to get all of the places that we want to have it um, ready in advance. So I'm starting to work on that so that um, when it's ready, we'll be able to get it onto the engage page, get it out via email, get the paper copy set up to be in different places. Um, if it if we are lucky, I, I'm not sure that we'll be, I have to look at the timeline again, but we'll at least be able to at the screening event, and we can sort of transition now into talking about that, um, we'll be able to offer um, maybe at that time, at least that we're about to launch the survey so that we can capture all those folks there who might be interested in taking it. Um, excuse me, I just um, I'm gonna put just put my mute and my camera off for one second. I just have somebody that came to the door quickly.
All right. It was a dog, not a somebody, but <laughs> nonetheless. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, so now we, we have some items to discuss for our upcoming, um, town hall, which is actually fast approaching. It's a week from Thursday on the 30th and, um, very, very excited. Uh, Robin will be flying in on the 29th. And so, um, just some decision points. Uh, Lexus is not here yet. I was, I don't think, no, I was hoping that she might be able to speak with us a little bit about Amherst Media's role that night. Um, we will be meeting in the space with Alexis and Amherst Media prior. Uh, one thing to know is the actual screening itself cannot be live streamed or recorded. So we have opening remarks that are going to occur, and then um, we'll have the screening, and then we have the discussion that will occur after the screening. The opening remarks and the discussion can both be recorded and live streamed, but unfortunately, due to the um, community licensing agreement, we can't do that for the screening. The good news is it's a free, it's free for folks. So if somebody is unable to be there, um, they can kind of put the pieces together themselves. They can watch the beginning, then they can go on to PBS, watch the free screening, and then they can um, finish it off by watching the discussion. Um, so just before we kind of move into some more details, are there any broad questions or comments right now about the event? And can you um, say the time and everything so I can mark it down? Absolutely, yes. So doors open at 5.45 p.m. I'm going to um, share my screen. That's on, that's on the 30th. Yes, that's on the 30th. And can you all see my screen right now? Um, right now? Yeah, awesome. Okay, so here's the invitation. Um, and it's March 30th from yes, 6 to Oh, Dr. Shabazz? Okay. Um, it's March 30th from 6 to 9 p.m. Doors open at 5.45. Um, this has gone out to many, 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 many people um, based on the conversation that we had at our last meeting. Um, in addition, it's been added uh, to the Engage Amherst page um, and to the community calendars. Um, Jennifer is, if she hasn't already, sending it out to um, her contact list. Mm -hmm. And then today, the entire student body and staff of Amherst College will be receiving this. Um, so the Amherst Student Senate um, has the ability to send out to the entire campus. So that's also happening. Um, and then I wanted to just point out a couple things um, just to kind of go through the, what the evening will look like. Um, I'm hoping that we can plan a dinner, a uh, small dinner with Alder, former Alderwoman Robin Rue Simmons um, for the AHRA to, uh, to, to be with her prior to this. It would be an early dinner, so somewhere around four o'clock, and I'm working on some details around that. Um, but that would not, that would be just a smaller, um, smaller something with, with Robin. And then the doors will open at 545. Um, there are folks that have received an invite that will be RSVPing and we'll have seats set up for those folks. And then everyone else will be coming um, sort of on a first come first serve basis. Um, we do, uh, unfortunately, so Michael Elliott, who's the president of the college, um, wanted to be there to make opening remarks, um, but unfortunately has some longstanding travel plans. Um, so he, I'm just, as I'm speaking to you, looking up, um, he is has asked somebody in the administration to make remarks, opening remarks, and I'm just... Um, looking up who that is, their name, I want to get their name right. 
Um, so that will happen initially is we'll open, we'll open the event up at six o'clock. We'll have some opening remarks. And when I find that I'll, I'll let you know, and then we'll watch the screening and then following the screening, um, we'll have a conversation with Robin, um, as an AHRA and as a, a student Senate at the college. Um, and Mike Jerk, who is the Racial History of Amherst College Research Fellow currently, is also going to be participating in that discussion with us. Um, we did invite Counselor Anika Lopes um, to participate in the discussion. She graciously agreed to do so. But since then, um, we've had some discussions about a possible perceived conflict of interest that may be um, created given that she will later be um, making, uh, having to vote on recommendations that come forward by our committee. Um, so, but she will be there and, um, and members, we hope of the board of the um, Ancestral Bridges Foundation will also be in attendance. So any questions about this right now, who, you know, in, in terms of if, if we need to get it to other people outside of the, the group that we talked about last week um, or any other comments or questions right now about this? And is everybody able to be there? I know Dr. Rhodes um, will be very sad not to have you there, Dr. Rhodes. I'm wondering if somehow, if you are available at the one second, <laughs> sorry, having a busy afternoon here. Perfect. Okay. Um, Dr. Rhodes, I wonder if somehow if you're available during that time, we might be able to have you um, like on Zoom somehow so that you can participate or at least be there um, with us in some capacity. So maybe we can talk about that. Is everyone else planning on being there in person? Okay, great. Yes, Sivan. Yeah. Okay, good. Excellent. Um, I think I, I'm going to stop sharing because I think hands are going up. Okay, Dr. Shabazz, I see your hand and then I see Ms. Bridges. Oh, uh, Ms. Bridges? Um, I was thinking it may be a very good idea to have Robin look, uh, see the exhibits. Yes. Both both in at Amherst College and the Civil War exhibits because that can happen anytime. I could bring her in there anytime. I think that might be a very good idea for her to see both. Absolutely agree. Um, that would be fantastic. If you, I've already um, also spoken to Anika about this. I oh. One or both of you could be available. Um, I let Anika know I was going to send her, um, Robin's on a pretty tight timeline, um, but Anika kind of blocked out some time for it. And I was going to also speak with you and one or both of you at both would be fantastic. <laughs> okay. Okay. Didn't yeah. know. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're moving. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking because, you know, that's, that's the reason I'm here. So, you know, for both them, the, the very reason um, with the ancestral bridges and, and civil war, that's, that's the reason that's what, what I'm, why I'm here. So I think that would be great for her to see him. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okie dokie. And thank you, um, for, for your willingness to do that. And, um, as soon as I have kind of a more set travel schedule in terms of like, what time does she get up in the morning? <laughs> Yeah, that's a good thing. Because <laughs> she's only here for really that one day. We'll, right. we'll make it happen. <laughs> okay, that would be great. Um, all right. Dr. Shabazz, did you have your hand? Did it, is it down now? Well, I took it down, but um, only to say I'll be happy to uh, introduce Robin on what someone else is doing that. I think you said you'd be happy to introduce Robin um, to uh, the 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 tablets and the with with um, Ms. Bridges. Is that what I heard you say? No, I'm in it. I'm in at the evening. at the at this uh, after the screening and when she 
Oh, yes. introduced to uh, 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 to give remarks. Yes, I think so. I heard you say you'd like to introduce Robin um, after the screening, may, give her introduction. Is that right? I'm yes. going to so. Okay, that's great. Awesome. That would be fantastic. Um, excellent. Um, and I was actually trying to think that through, and maybe we'll do that more on next Monday, but just how we want that all to flow. Um, we should talk about that, like, because she'll be there, obviously. So do we introduce her in the beginning or, and I, I'll get a better sense of, um, let me just pull up the email I got from Michael, um, here we go, Michael Elliott. Um, so it was really wonderful. Chuck Lewis um, from the Lewis Sebring Foundation has been speaking to a lot of folks at the college, inviting them to come, folks on the board. Um, and he did make an invite to Michael for us. Um, so Michael has, let's see. Um, all right. So because he cannot attend himself, he's asked Angie Tizzy Gassaway, who's the chief student affairs officer, and who's the chief student affairs officer and dean of students who will be making opening remarks. And then I would assume that Cyrus will also want to make um, some remarks from coming from the student Senate. So any questions or uh, comments about the event? All right, great. Are, are we required to say anything or bring anything or ask um, any members? That's a great question. I think that's for us to do. I, I sort of the way that I was imagining it is that at least in the discussion that we would be having after the screening that the pan the panel would essentially include AHRA members, Robin, Mike as the research fella, and then um, the leadership of the um, Amherst Student Senate would all sort of be part of that discussion. Um, and we'll want to think about just what sort of questions might, you know, maybe the idea is to sort of pull from the audience after having watched the screening and see what comes up. Um, Pamela? So just a suggestion. So you're going to live stream the opening and the closing. So I would say after the opening, maybe one slide that would have the PBS information so that people will, who are watching it live streaming can go directly to the PBS, PBS to watch um, the programming. That's an awesome suggestion. Yes, absolutely. And I'll talk to Alexis about, they can pretty easily throw in, like get slides up. And if they have, she already has our logo and stuff like that, but I can also make a slide and get it over. Um, okay, any other questions or comments about the event? Um, what time do we need to, you said the doors open at 5.30 and you said there would be a dinner or something. Do yeah. You know what time we need to, to be there? So what I'm, the, the doors open at 5.45. So I think if we can be there by 5.15, um, but if we do a dinner before, um, depending on where that occurs, it will probably, it will be more like a lunch dinner, like a 3.45 or four o'clock. Um, for one hour uh, with Robin. And then, yes, if we can all plan to be at the powerhouse at 515. I plan to get some more information about parking for everyone before our next meeting so that you all know where to park. Um, but I think that that would be uh, our best bet is to be there by 515. Great. Um, and if you all could please send it out to your contacts in Amherst, um, send out the invite. I've, it's in your email box. 
Um, I know that the Indy has covered it and I believe that the Gazette will also be covering it this week. So, um, but if you could send it out to the folks in your contact list, that would be fantastic. All right, any other, anything else there? Sort of along the same lines, um, the, the uh, Black Student Union at Amherst College has asked us if we would um, come and provide a listening session for the student body at Amherst College. Um, and so I wanted to open that up to the group. I think that having a listening session at all three institutions would be ideal, but in terms of our capacity um, between now and let's say May, um, or even the end of April, we might want to split up. So we might want to have um, not all of us, if we can't all be at each one, I, I don't, I don't see a problem with that. But I think that, I think that responding to the request um, is important. So I'm curious what others think about that. Are there any um, dates and times that work better for folks? Um, they The Student Senate meets um, at Amherst College, not the Student Senate, excuse me, the Black Student Union meets, I believe, on Tuesday evenings. So I was going to look at some Tuesdays that might be possible for a couple of us. Yes, Dr. Shabazz. Hey. Sorry. Um, soon will be better. Um, just that's... saying that uh, it, it's to move soon on it. To move soon on on the listening sessions at the institutions. Cannot hear him at all. No. <laughs> uh, you're going to have to start using your hand raising to give yes or yeah. no. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, I agree. Uh, and I'm wondering, do, do any committee members feel strongly that every or most of us should be I think we should attempt for whoever can be there to be there, but I think that we shouldn't let that get in the way of planning these um, at the three institutions. And Pamela, I wonder, um, Jennifer, remember Pamela uh, set us up to meet with the folks at Hampshire College, and we did that about a couple of months ago. Maybe they're a good place to start in terms of setting something up there. Okay, so we can reach out there and see what might be best for their student body. Dr. Shabazz, do you have any ideas about what might be might work for um, the UMass student body? Working on that as well. I, uh, Something's wrong with Mike. Something's really wrong. Yeah. Yeah, it's really wrong. Even to sound uh yeah. And he's still talking. He can't understand him. <laughs> okay, Dr. Shabazz, we're having a really hard time hearing you. Um, so I will check. I will touch base with you about that question um, offline, and then we can report back to the group. Um, but in terms of dates for an Amherst College listening session, um, we're looking at, I think next Tuesday is not possible given that we have the screening on the 30th. Um, so we'd be looking at the 4th, the 11th, the 18th, all in April. Um, why don't I identify which date would work with the Black Student Union and I'll send out by email and we can see what works for members and then we can confirm something. And that's not something we're going to have to broadly publicize or take a lot of time to do because 
they'll just do once we have it scheduled, they'll actually put it out to the student body um, and the and the faculty and staff um, for us. So um, we can turn it around pretty quickly. Does that work? Okay. And then I'll talk to Dr. Shabazz about UMass and um, Jennifer and I will reach out to the folks um, that we met with at Hampshire College and see what might work best for them. Um, I, I will say I, I was speaking with somebody um, from one of the news outlets recently who was asking some quite actually pretty in-depth questions about the work we're doing. And she commented, she's from the Eastern part of the state, and she commented that if she were to write a story, um, and I think it was for like the, um, I'll have to look, but she she would she would write a story about how inclusive our process has been in Amherst, and that in Boston um, there were lots of private decisions. I think that were made or or that were not in the public's view before the task force language was um, voted on, and so she was just. Um, crediting us for having such an open and transparent and inclusive process. And that really made me think about, um, you know, we've been hosting these listening sessions and educational events and, and taking comments from the public. And what, what else, if we're in June and we're looking back, you know, what else would we have wanted to do that we haven't done in terms of um, listening to the community. One of the things Jennifer and I have talked a lot about is, you know, reaching the folks in our community who we don't have contact with through these regular means, um, like who aren't able or do not choose to come to meetings. Um, where are they? And um, going out into the community. Um, and I'd really love for us to think that through so that we can have a conversation um, in the very near future about how we can provide those listening opportunities for our community. Uh, so let me, are there any comments or questions right now? I'm just, I'm, I really wanted to keep with our three o'clock timeline for everybody involved. Um, okay, so um, we, just to give you a little bit of an update on the Darity Mullen League of Women Voters Racial Justice Committee collaboration, um, we, a couple of us, um, Irv and I, have been meeting with a group of a couple of folks from there um, that and we're sort of developing goals for the event and what is sort of the shared purpose. And um, there's not much to report back on at this time, but when there is, uh, we certainly will report back. It's, it's been tough to get everybody together. I did also want to make everybody aware, and this is please share this broadly. I will be sharing it on all the social media and also um, I will share it uh, with, with the context that I have. The Stolen Beam is opening up a new series. Uh, they've again invited us to be co-sponsors and that is going to be happening at the Jones Library. Um, this is uh, set to start on April 13th for five weeks from 7 to 8.20 p.m. It is online via Zoom, um, but in partnership with the Jones Library and um, this is an excellent program for folks. If you're not familiar with it, I, um, I'll send out the link to the group to, to provide more information, but we, I think we all are pretty familiar with it. Um, but please do uh, share the news about that with your contacts. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and call our second period of public comment. Um, so if, uh, anybody in the audience would like to make public comment, um, please raise your hand and we'll bring you into the room. And I do see one hand raised um, and we'll be listening for up to three minutes. And, um, and thank you for joining us. So...
I think Kiara is um, making her way over. Okay, welcome Kiara, can you hear us? Okay, yes, I can hear you. Okay. Um, <laughs> hi everybody. Um, I just wanted to say, um, I did send you all an, an email about um, the federal register notice that the Office of Management and Budget had, had posted, um, where you can go and look at the, um, pr the proposals that they're making towards revising um, the way that race and ethnicity um, stats are collected. You can go in and read through it all. And just kind of, you know, if you want to leave any, leave any comments, um, that goes until April 12th. And I also wanted to add, um, in addition to the, um, the town hall that's gonna be hosted on the 30th, um, the Alliance for Afro-American Cultural Education is also gonna be hosting a virtual uh, preparations activity on this, that Saturday from two to four. And it's gonna be uh, featuring a lot of different engaging presenters from across the country. Uh, one of the guests, I'll just go ahead and say now, um, if you know about the um, the Harvard case where T Tamara Lanier is suing Harvard about her ancestors' uh, pictures that they um, had maintained, she's going to be speaking about her case. Um, it'll be, be really, really interesting. We have some guests from um, Justice for Greenwood that will be presenting as well. So it'll be really engaging um, activity on that Saturday. So a really busy reparations weekend. Uh, so I just wanted to put that out there. If you haven't gotten, gotten an invitation to it, you should be getting it. Um, today if you haven't gotten it already. Thank you. Kiara, thank you so much. I, I'm just looking, I wanted to make sure, I think it was sent to the town council, but I'm checking to see, um, I will make sure that it gets forwarded to the AHRA as well. I know I saw it come through on my council uh, site for sure. Um, I'll, I'll make sure I forward it to, to Jennifer. She hasn't received it yet. I'll make sure I do that. That would be great. I, yeah, I think Jennifer and I received it as we were out this morning at um, another workshop. So just haven't had a chance to uh, distribute it, but I'm pretty certain I saw that email come in. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Kiara. All right. Are there any uh, member? Reports, announcements, comments. Yes, Dr. Rhodes. This is just an, uh, an, an announcement. I, um, one of the things that uh, I have been very interested in, especially in relationship to the um, BIPOC and Black population of youth and Amherst was uh, doing a summer uh, entrepreneurship program. That's a biz camp. And I um, am now pretty far down the road. Uh, the schools are looking at it in terms of a place to hold it this summer. It'll be in July, but it will be for about 25 uh, youth. I will send out uh, um, some information on it so people can understand what it is. Uh, it, it's a youth entrepreneurship program sponsored by the National Foundation for Teaching Entrepreneurship. Uh, I once uh, taught uh, as a certified teacher of that entrepreneurship program uh, post Katrina uh, to about 75 uh, students in uh, New Orleans. Mm -hmm. And I, and it's a really powerful, really great program. And I'm really excited and I'm hoping that it comes to fruition to have that here in Amherst this summer. Uh, it is something that I have seen would be really good for our youth to have. And then to follow up on that, uh, we'll be working on a, a year long, two day a week entrepreneurship pro program for adults. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You got it. This is am I this is the right the right this, step, this right? Is it. This is it. Okay. This is it. Awesome. Um and I did get this. And so I will also, um, Dr. Rhodes, if you if it's easier for you, I can forward it to the group. Um I'd, yeah, I appreciate that. Sure. Absolutely. Um, Dr. Shabazz. 
Thank you. Um, I saw that from Irv as well, and I really uh, commend that effort. I think it's going to be an uh, incredible opportunity when my um, uh, one of my children was at Amherst Regional High School. <clears throat> there was some type of entrepreneurship course that was uh, that was offered to the high schoolers, but it was um, it was not well well developed. It was not well thought out and nor well executed. So I don't know what the status of anything like that is today in the Amherst Regional High School. But um, if it was anything like it was uh, ten years ago, it uh, it could definitely be supplemented. Um, or uh, but uh, at any rate, I think this will be a great. Uh, effort. I hope that um, I don't know what the rollout ideas might be, but you know, if uh, you know the business community itself could could be involved, would be great. If uh, you know, uh, I'll certainly be making aware the it, making it aware to the Black Business Association of Amherst area. Uh, they met yesterday. The group met yesterday. We had uh, Town Manager Bokelman with us, so. You know, that's about almost 30 uh, Black uh, entrepreneurs in the Amherst area represented in BBAAA. So um, I, I'm sure they will also find it um, to be very encouraging to have this kind of thing. Only other thing I wanted to really add is that um, former student of mine, Robert Turner, um, has uh, in, kind of inspired me with his uh, walks. He's in... Uh, Baltimore, Maryland area, and uh, he's been uh, walking to to the White House. He's been walking, uh, uh, you know, many many miles uh, on behalf of reparations. And so, in April, sometime, I haven't worked out all the details, but um, I'm going to be uh, walking for reparations. Uh, I call it four for forty, four for our forty acres. I'll be walking from the Atkins uh, Market. Uh, parking lot of Atkins Market all the way up to the town commons. And I've Google, I did the map quest on that. It's about four miles. So uh, if you want to walk for, for reparations, uh, look for that uh, four for 40. We're going to be walking for reparations. Uh, Dr. Chavez, uh one of the things that uh, in terms of the entrepreneurship program uh, that I'm working on is to have the uh, business improvement district be one of the sponsors. So much the better. I, like I said, I, I wish uh, many businesses will, will be involved and, and certainly just as role models of, of, uh, of other success, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, like I said, consider uh, BBAAA as well, because uh, they are, uh, uh, are real, I'm sure would be very interested to see more uh, 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 youth of African descent being involved in learning the basics of entrepreneurship. Yeah. And I know Dr. Rhodes was set to speak with Ms. Pat, who um, chairs that committee. So um, perhaps they'll be able to talk more about that. Um, I do absolutely love the four for 40, Dr. Shabazz. Thank you for sharing that. And um, I, I had thought actually about um, inviting Robert out here um, before we finish our work. He, he has um, expressed interest in being part of our work and in our process. So we should think that through too. <laughs> All right. So are there any other comments or questions right now before uh, or, or announcements or anything. So again, just for next week, we'll want to plan to be available for uh, uh, until at least 3.30 if possible, um, because we'll likely have a draft of the survey. Um, we'll want to have our last minute preparations for our event. And so um, all of that will sort of be ready and available for next Monday. Okay, well, um, wonderful meeting, very efficient and productive and so great to see everyone. And I am going to adjourn the meeting at 2.53 p.m. Have a great week. Thank you. Okay.